Hello everybody. I welcome all of you to this series of presentation on design of column base. These presentations are a part of eShikshana program 5 with respect to 18 CV 61 design of steel structures. I am Dr. Ravi Raj working as professor in the department of civil engineering of SJC JSSTU Mysuru. Well, let us just try to see what are the learning outcomes with respect to this particular topic that is design of column base. So, if you look at the things that we are trying to talk about in this presentation. Okay. So, we start with introduction for column base, types of column base, then the first one that is the slab base, then the gazetted base and numerical examples okay, covering slab base and gazetted base. If we just try to talk about the topic that we are trying to talk about. Okay. So, we have steel columns okay, in steel structures. As you understand, we have structures made of concrete and structures made of steel. Now, we just try to look at the steel structures. So, basically we have columns correct and these columns normally carry large compressive forces. And when we just talk about these steel columns correct. So, we normally try to have okay, a base made of concrete. So, we just try to look at this figure. So, you have the concrete that is you have the steel column, you have got the concrete base correct. So, one thing that you need to understand here is okay, the cross sectional area of the steel columns. If you just normally if you just try to look at the I sections. Okay, the dimensions are really small. The thickness of the flanges and webs could be about 10 mm okay, or it could be 11 mm, 12 mm. Okay. And if you just try to notice that these columns carry huge compressive forces and the stresses carried by these columns are quite large. Correct? And you need to understand that these large compressive stresses that we have in the column cannot be directly okay, transferred onto the concrete bed basically because you cannot expect the concrete bed to resist those large high stresses. Okay. So, what you need to understand is generally we expect okay, crushing of concrete to take place. So, what is it that we are trying to do with respect to that? So, normally if we just try to notice here, okay, so we have put a mild steel plate correct right below the column. You can clearly see that that is the steel column, that is the concrete bed below. So, between the steel column and the concrete bed, okay, we are trying to have steel plates okay, and this is what we are talking about in this particular discussion that is the column base. Okay. So, mild steel plate of sufficient area. So, you can notice that you have some length, some breadth. Okay. So, depending upon the force okay, that is carried by the column. So, we just try to arrive at the dimension of this particular uh, plate okay, that we have placed below the column. Correct. So, it is made of uh, mild steel. So, sufficient uh, dimensions, length, breadth and thickness okay, are arrived to resist this large compressive or transfer this large compressive force from steel column to the concrete bed. Correct? Now, this steel plate whatever we are trying to provide here okay, will distribute the large compressive force okay, more uniformly okay, on the concrete bed so that okay, the bed can easily resist okay, these large stresses. Okay, and we are when we are trying to design this, we see to it that okay, the stresses that we are trying to transfer from the steel plate onto the concrete bed okay, are kept well within the 
permissible limit with respect to the bearing strength of the concrete. Okay. Now, if the steel plate is not provided the, at the column, as I said, one thing is that it is going to uh, get crushed at the same time. Okay, because of that, the steel column gets uh, punched. Okay, it moves down, and you can notice that. Okay, punching. Okay, of concrete. Okay, can take place under such situations. Correct, and whatever steel plates. Okay, that we are trying to provide at the base are called as column bases. Correct. So we are just trying to have these kind of things. Okay, and you need to understand that. Uh, okay these base plates whatever we are trying to provide okay will just try to help us in three different ways okay that is with respect to alignment of the column okay you can clearly align all these columns properly because normally okay the concrete beds okay will not be that even correct so you can just try to see to it that you can clearly put these plates in level and then you can just try to al align the columns properly even the verticality of the columns okay can be easily controlled by having these plates at the bottom okay of the columns okay and also we can just try to have some control with respect to the deflection of frames or movement of columns okay all those things okay we can have control having placed these columns okay and uh, please understand that uh, the bearing pressure okay acting okay below the base plate okay right Okay, results from okay, the bending moment and the shear force. Now, as I told you, the columns are subjected to okay huge compressive uh, forces. Correct. So, apart from that, because of that, you can expect okay the stresses. That is, once I just try to uh, apply a large force okay on on a uh, plate. So, this is what you need to understand. So, we have a plate, and because of that force, so please understand that you can expect okay. The bottom bearing uh, pressure to develop over here and as a result of this as a result of this if you just try to have any cross section okay any cross section here you can expect that okay these uh, pressure that we are trying to have here results in the bending moments and shear in the plate this red line whatever I have marked okay represents the plate this is the plate and that is a column load okay and this is the uh, pressure that we have from the concrete bed okay and uh, just trying to act up and you can clearly see that each and every cross section will have some values of bending moments and shear forces and we need to understand that when we're trying to talk about uh, trying to design the plate okay especially we have to be uh, looking at the bending moments that will develop because of this okay and finally please understand that the steel plates okay are secured firmly okay to the concrete bed correct to the concrete bed by providing sufficient number of bolts okay which are also called as holding down bolts okay or rag bolts right so that means when you just try to put a plate okay and then place the column on top of the plate correct so there would be connection between the column okay and the uh, base plate through the cleat angles so further Please understand that the base plate will be further connected okay to the concrete bed by means of hold down bolts or rag bolts correct now coming to the type of columns so there are two popular types of column bases that we are trying to have here the first one is the slab base and the second one is the gazetted base right so let us briefly look into these two types of uh, column bases that is the slab base okay and gazetted base to begin with let us start with the slab base okay please understand that the slab bases are generally provided when the uh, compressive load or the compressive force carried by the column okay is relatively small okay whenever we have columns with r relatively small loads you can think of having okay slab bases the first type of column base okay it's generally more simpler okay generally it consists of a base plate as we said okay right which is kept below the column and this particular base plate okay right okay is connected to the column by means of 
cleat angles. Is it alright? So, you have the base plate, you just try to put the column on top of that, okay. And then we are trying to connect this the column and the base plate by means of cleat angles, okay. And it is important to understand that generally, generally, correct, the, the lower surface or the bottom of the column is machined. I make it so that you got a perfectly even surface. Not only we are trying to talk about machining, okay, the lower end of the column, we are also trying to machine the top surface, okay, of the uh, base slab or that mild steel plate, okay, so that, okay, you can clearly expect the load to be transferred 100 percent by bearing. Is it all right? Okay, whenever we just talk about machining, that means trying to have a smooth plane surface, okay, below the column as well as above the uh, I mean MS plate, we expect that, okay, the load gets transferred, okay, through bearing, correct. Okay? So, this is an important thing that we are trying to talk about, okay, in this particular discussion, okay. Sometimes, okay, that is when you just try to talk about uh, uh, if you want to have a flush surface on top of your uh, I mean uh, base slab like for example if that is a base slab that is a base slab correct is it all right now if you do not want to have any kind of uh, projections on top of that due to bolts right you can also try to have okay something like this where we just try to countersunk okay right these kind of uh, fixtures so that you have a plain even surface on the top of the uh, gusseted uh, on slab base okay and important in case of slab base okay we are not trying to have any gusseted plates okay holding okay the the column additionally so this comes to the second type of uh, uh, column base that is gusseted base where we are trying to have okay gussets in addition okay to what we are trying to have this uh, this kind of arrangement so however in case of slab base okay, there are no gusset plates, okay, in this particular case. It is a relatively simpler connection, okay. And we need to understand that, okay, this base plate, okay, is anchored, right, to the concrete bed, okay, at the corners, okay. And look at this, if you just try to notice this, okay, you got 1, 2, 3 and 4, correct, is it all right? So, 4, uh, I mean, uh, uh, bolts holding down bolts, okay, are seen, okay, placed, okay, right at the corners of this particular base plate so that, okay, there would be no lateral movement happening here. Normally what is done is these uh, bolts, okay, will be generally uh, laid in position, okay, during the casting of concrete bed, correct, so that is all these bolts, right, of sufficient diameter and you can notice that okay so these bolts will be protruding into the concrete at least to a length of about one and a half to two feet or about 450 to 600 mm okay it will be embedded and also there would be okay uh, the bolts okay visible okay right or those uh, when uh, shanks okay visible right okay rods visible okay above the concrete surface so that you can just try to conveniently place these slab uh, 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 MS steel plates, right, uh, properly, okay, so that you can just try to rest the column on top of that, okay. So, this is important for you to understand, okay. The foundation is generally made of reinforced concrete which transfers the load, okay, onto the soil. So, please understand it will be a normal kind of a uh, reinforcement that you can just try to think of correct in case of concrete slab, okay. So, just a regular kind of foundation you can just try to expect, is it alright in this particular case. You can just try to have a look at this, okay. So, this is the kind of arrangement that we are trying to talk about in this case that is slab base. So, this is the column that we are trying to talk about, an I section. So, you can clearly notice that. So, we have an I section, okay, over there. So, that is the I section that we are trying to talk about and this I section, okay, is resting okay, above this particular plate, okay. So, this is the uh, base plate that you can just try to notice over here, correct. And this particular base plate, okay, rests on, okay, rests on, okay, the concrete, cement concrete bed, okay. You can clearly understand, okay, the column, 
column rests on the uh, steel plate, MS steel plate and MS steel plate rests on the cement concrete bed. And in case of slab base, you can think of having angles. If this is just to support okay, the I section. So we can think of it. Now, this steel plate, whatever we are trying to provide here, okay, will distribute the large compressive force okay, more uniformly okay, on the concrete bed so that okay, the bed can easily resist okay, these large stresses. Okay, and we are when we are trying to design this, we see to it that okay, the stresses that we are trying to transfer from the steel plate onto the concrete bed okay, are kept well within the permissible limit with respect to the bearing strength of the concrete. Okay. Now, if the steel plate is not provided the, at the column, as I said, one thing is that it's going to uh, get crushed at the same time. Okay, because of that, the steel column gets uh, punched. Okay, it moves down, and you can notice that. Okay, punching. Okay, of concrete. Okay, can take place under such situations. Correct, and whatever steel plates. Okay, that we are trying to provide at the base are called as column bases. Correct. So we are just trying to have these kind of things. Okay, and you need to understand that. Uh, okay. These base plates, whatever we are trying to provide, okay, will just try to help us in three different ways, okay. That is with respect to alignment of the column, okay. You can clearly align all these columns properly because normally, okay, the concrete beds, okay, will not be that even, correct. So, you can just try to see to it that you can clearly put these plates in level and then you can just try to al align the columns properly. Even the verticality of the columns. Okay, can be easily controlled by having these plates at the bottom okay, of the columns. Okay, and also we can just try to have some control with respect to the deflection of frames or movement of columns. Okay, all those things. Okay, we can have control having placed these columns. Okay, and uh, please understand that uh, the bearing pressure okay, acting okay, below the base plate, okay, right? Okay, results from okay, the bending movement and the shear force. Now, as I told you, the columns are subjected to okay, huge compressive uh, forces, correct? So, apart from that, because of that, you can expect okay, the stresses, that is, once I just try to uh, apply a large force okay, on, on a uh, plate. So, this is what you need to understand. So, we have a plate and because of that force, so please understand that you can expect, okay, the bottom bearing uh, pressure to develop over here and as a result of this, as a result of this, if you just try to have any cross section, okay, any cross section here, you can expect that, okay, these uh, pressure that we are trying to have here results in the bending moments and shear in the plate. This red line, whatever I have marked, okay, represents the plate. This is the plate and that is the column load. Okay, and this is the uh, pressure that we have from the concrete bed. Okay, and uh, this is trying to act up and you can clearly see that each and every cross section will have some values of bending moments and shear forces. And we need to understand that when we are trying to talk about uh, trying to design the plate, okay, especially we have to be uh, looking at the bending moments that will develop because of this. Okay, and finally, please understand that the steel plates, okay, are secured firmly okay to the concrete bed correct right? to the concrete bed by providing sufficient number of bolts okay which are also called as holding down bolts okay or rag bolts right so that means when you just try to put a plate okay and then place the column on top of the plate correct right? so there would be connection between the column okay and the uh, base plate through the cleat angles so further Please understand that the base plate will be further connected okay, to the concrete bed by means of hold down bolts or rag bolts. Correct? Now coming to the type of columns. So there are two popular types of column bases that we are trying to have here. The first one is the slab base and the second one is the gazetted base. Right? So let us briefly look into these two types of uh, 
column basis that is the slab base okay and gazetted base to begin with let us start with the slab base okay please understand that the slab bases are generally provided when the uh, compressive load or the compressive force carried by the column okay is relatively small okay whenever we have columns with relatively small loads you can think of having okay slab bases the first type of column base okay it's generally more simpler okay generally it consists of a base plate as we said okay right which is kept below the column and this particular base plate okay right okay is connected to the column by means of cleat angles is it all right so you have the base plate you just try to put the column on top of that okay and then we are trying to connect this the column and the base plate by means of cleat angles okay and it's important to understand that generally generally correct the the lower surface or the bottom of the column is machined i make it so that you got a perfectly even surface not only we are trying to talk about machining okay the lower end of the column we are also trying to machine the top surface okay of the uh, base slab or that mild steel plate okay so that okay you can clearly expect the load to be transferred 100% by bearing is it all right okay whenever we just talk about machining that means trying to have a smooth plane surface okay below the column as well as above the uh, my, I mean ms plate we expect that okay the load gets transferred okay through bearing correct so this is an important thing that we are trying to talk about okay in this particular discussion okay sometimes okay that is when you just try to talk about uh, uh, if you want to have a flush surface on top of your uh, i mean uh, base slab like for example if that is a base slab that's a base slab correct is it all right now if you don't want to have any kind of uh, projections on top of that due to bolts right you can also try to have okay something like this where we just try to countersunk okay right these kind of uh, fixtures so that you have a plain even surface on the top of the uh, gusseted um, on slab base okay and important in case of slab base okay we are not trying to have any gusseted plates okay holding okay the the column additionally so this comes to the second type of uh, uh, a column base that is gusseted base where we are trying to have okay gussets in addition okay to what we are trying to have this well, this is kind of arrangement so however in case of slab base okay there are no gusset plates okay in this particular case it's a relatively simpler connection okay and we need to understand that okay this base plate okay is anchored right to the concrete bed okay at the corners okay and look at this if you just try to notice this okay you got 1 2 3 and 4 correct is it all right so four uh, i mean uh, uh, bolts holding down bolts okay are seen okay placed okay right at the corners of this particular base plate so that okay there would be no lateral movement happening here normally what is done is these uh, uh, bolts okay will be generally uh, laid in position okay during the casting of concrete bed correct so that is all these bolts right of sufficient diameter and you can notice that okay so these bolts will be protruding into the concrete at least to a length of about 1 and a half to 2 ft or about 450 to 600 mm okay it will be embedded and also there would be okay uh, the bolts okay visible okay right or those uh, when uh, shanks okay visible right okay rods visible okay above the concrete surface so that you can just try to conveniently place these slab uh, 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 ms steel plates right uh, properly okay so that you can just try to rest the column on top of that okay so this is important for you to understand okay the foundation is generally made of reinforced concrete which transfers the load okay onto the soil so please understand it will be a normal kind of a uh, reinforcement that you can just try to 
think of correct in case of concrete slab okay so just a regular kind of foundation you can just try to expect is it all right in this particular case you can just try to have a look at this okay so this is the kind of arrangement that we are trying to talk about in this case that is a slab base so this is the column that we are trying to talk about an i section so you can clearly notice that so we have an i section okay over there so that's the i section that we are trying to talk about and this i section okay is resting okay above this particular plate okay so this is the uh, base plate that you can just try to notice over here correct and this particular base plate okay rests on okay rests on okay the concrete cement concrete bed okay you can clearly understand okay the column column rests on the uh, steel plate ms steel plate and ms steel plate rests on the cement concrete bed and in case of slab base you can think of having angles if this is just to support okay the i section so we can think angle here is it all right this angle is trying to connect the uh, web of the i section with the top okay of the ms plate so you can have one web cleat angle here another web cleat angle on the other side of the web so there is one more angle which you can notice here okay that is a flange cleat angle so this angle connects the flange okay with the uh, ms plate so you can have one flange cleat angle here and you can also see that there is one more okay flange cleat angle present so totally you can have right it's not mandatory but if it is possible you can accommodate correct so uh, but however at least two two cleat angles are really required minimum you can also put all the four correct so we have two flange cleat angles here in this figure and two web cleat angles as you can clearly see here okay they are just to keep the i section in position right and you can just try to put nominal uh, uh, bolts okay in this particular case so apart from that you also have these hold down bolts so there's one you're trying to see there is two there is three and you can expect that there would be a holding down bolt or rag bolt on the other corner that is this i hope you're trying to understand it's a very simple connection that we have here an i section resting on an ms steel plate and this ms steel plate rests on a cement concrete bed correct and uh, in this case we are trying to have uh, angles okay connecting the web with the ms plate and the flange with the ms plate and finally you have these hold down bolts okay which tries to which try to keep the ms plate okay in position right so this is all about this and we have some more uh, drawings here so this is in plan so if you just try to look at this if you want to draw the plan of that so you can clearly see the outer box is of the rectangular concrete bed okay so the inner box okay rectangle is the base plate okay so that would be the length that would be the width and this is the i section that we are trying to have here and you can clearly see this is the uh, I mean web cleat angle one web cleat angle two and that is the flange cleat angle one and that's a flange cleat angle two and these are the four corner holding down bolts or rag bolts i hope you can clearly understand that figure so apart from that if you just, just talk about the elevation from this side you can clearly notice that you are trying to see the web of the i section okay and then we have the flange over here in this case he has put even cover plates okay right so that it can carry more load okay whenever a column wants to carry more load you can increase the area by trying to have additional flange plates okay right at both ends so that you can increase the cross sectional area and then the load carrying capability of the i section increases so anyway you have the uh, i section you have a cover plate okay and then this is the web cleat angle that is seen and you are trying to see even the flange cleat angle here as well as here and that is a concrete bed and you can clearly see the uh, hold down bolt holds so apart from that you have one more here side elevation if you just try to look from here how exactly it looks so you can clearly see when you just try to look at that you see the flange so that's a flange that we have here okay and these bolts whatever you're trying to see is nothing but bolts that that are connecting the cover plate okay with the flange of the i section however if you are not trying to have any cover plates so these uh, additional plus signs will not exist okay so apart from that you are all you also see the 
flange cleat angle over here, correct? And uh, you can clearly see the uh, base plate. So that's the base plate that we are trying to have here placed uh, below the column and then you have the anchor bolts. So I hope this is a, a very simple diagram that you can easily uh, understand. So now let's try to go to the uh, next uh, kind of uh, uh, base that we are trying to talk about. It is the gazetted base, correct? So when are we going for a gazetted base? So generally, okay, we can think of going for a gazetted base, okay, when we have loads which are quite heavy, correct? If it's lighter loads, yeah, you can manage without the gazette base, uh, gazetted base. Uh, plate okay so they are nothing but additional plates kept at the base okay to hold this column in position okay so whenever you think of heavy loads you can try to do that so apart from that even when we are trying to have uh, 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 moments addition additional to heavy loads you can think of having a uh, gazetted uh, uh, plates is it all right so coming when when they carry heavy loads okay and moments and moments correct is it all right column carrying that you can think of having a gazetted base, right? Okay. Now, when you just try to talk about uh, the, the kind of mechanism that's trying to happen here, okay, so you can clearly see that the loads are transmitted, okay, to the base plate, okay, through the gazetted plates, okay, which are attached to the flanges of the column, correct? So, what you need to understand is, okay, so we just try to attach these particular extra plates, right, at the bottom, to the flanges and you expect okay a part of the load also to be carried okay by the gazetted base okay and on to the uh, uh, I mean your ms base plate is what you need to understand okay and this particular uh, connection okay right, we can just try to have what are called as cleat angles okay will be normally provided correct uh, to connect these uh, uh, gazetted base gazetted plates with the uh, uh, I mean column as well as the uh, I mean bottom steel plate correct so this is what you need to understand with respect to this right okay yeah so that is we also try to talk about having extra cleat angles so that you can even have uh, connect the web of the column okay with the gazetted uh, with, with the ms plate so we can have uh, uh, similar to what we talked about okay web cleat angles correct and flange cleat angles but in this case flange cleat angle will also connect the gazet plate in this particular case Okay, now important to notice that, okay, the thickness of the base plate, okay, in this particular case, generally will be less than, okay, the thickness, okay, in case of a slab base for the same kind of load, okay, is what you need to understand. So, what you need to uh, uh, notice here is, if you try to take two columns, correct, with the same kind of load, okay, and you think of designing one uh, slab uh, uh, base and the other one gazetted base, you will notice that the thickness of base plate in case of a gazetted base okay will be less okay than the thickness in case of slab base now why is this okay you need to understand why does this happen is it all right okay because in this particular case is it all right okay so the bearing area okay of the column okay in the base plate okay increases by the gazette plate is it all right so this is what you need to understand okay for the same load okay the bearing area okay the column on base plate okay increases by the gazette plate and because of this you can notice this particular phenomena now the foundation is generally okay made of uh, as we have understood uh, a concrete bed okay which which will be reinforced at the bottom and this transfers the load okay onto the uh, soil uh, so that you have a uniform distribution right over there and i think we also saw this particular uh, uh, I mean, uh, picture right earlier also when we talked about uh, the uh, slab base right so the base plate whatever we are trying to have here okay is anchored okay even in this particular case with the foundation correct that is a concrete bed so generally we try to have uh, these uh, anchor bolts okay at the corners but however you can also additionally use more number of anchor bolts also okay in this particular case okay now, uh, generally the foundation is made of uh, reinforced concrete, that's what we said, I think earlier also, okay, which transfers the load to the soil over a larger area, okay, with uniform pressure. So, anyway, these are some pictures with respect to the gazetted base. So, one additional thing that you are trying to notice here is, okay, this particular plate, gazette plate, okay. In the previous case, okay, I section was there, there is a column made of I section, you had the cleat angle also, 
in the previous case. You also had the uh, base plate. Okay, you have you also had the concrete bed. So what is that additional thing that we have here? So look at this. Correct. So you have one additional plate. Correct. Placed something like this. This plate. Okay, is placed between the cleat angle. Correct and the column. Is it all right? So you can clearly understand that. Okay, your column. Okay, would be something like this. Is it all right? The column goes like that. Right. So you just try to keep one gusset plate on this side of the flange and, the other, and another gusset plate on the other side of the flange. Generally, we try to have these kind of arrangement as I said when the load is quite heavy or when the column is subjected to moments. Okay, we try to do that. So let's try to look at the other uh, sections. So this is in a uh, plan and you need to notice that. Okay, so this one, the inner one, correct. So what we are trying to talk about here, the inner one, correct. Okay, represents the gazette plate. Okay, so similarly, I have one more, one more, okay, present here. So that is another gazette plate. So you just try to keep one gazette plate okay on this side on the other side okay you can clearly notice that so this is when you just try to look from this side so this entire thing that is you can clearly see that the gazette base okay whatever you're trying to have here this this is the gazette one correct this is the gazette one correct is it all right so that's what you are trying to see over here so we are trying to have a gazette plate on this side of the flange as well as on the other side of the flange so when you just try to look at here so this is how it looks like. It's an extra kind of a, uh, uh, I mean, support that you can think of, okay, in this particular case, right? So this is in uh, uh, side elevation, right? This is the only extra thing that we have here. In the previous case, the cleat angle was present, flange cleat angle was present only over the flange width, whereas here you, you can extend this flange cleat angle over the entire width of the plate, entire width of the plate, right from here to here, correct? Now coming to the uh, I mean uh, front elevation from here, so you can clearly see that this is the column that we have here. Okay, the column, and this is the gusseted uh, plate that we are trying to have here. One here, one here. So I have the gusseted plate over here, and then you can think of the web cleat angle very similar to what we saw in case of slab base, correct? And then the flange cleat angles, okay, and the bolts, right? So anyway, I I hope you have now learned. Okay, the two types of uh, column bases, the slab base, okay, and the gazetted base. Now, let's try to start with uh, a numerical example connected with uh, the slab base, okay. So, let's try to see how this example uh, is about. Now, we have, uh, we are trying to design a slab base for a column. So, there is a column ISHP 300 at 710.2 Newton per meter, which is carrying a factored axial compressive force of 1500 kilonewtons. Is it all right? So we have a column of a given section, right, which is carrying a factored load of 1500 kilonewton. And we are trying to design a slab base, the first one, simple slab base. Okay, now there are two kind of uh, uh, conditions that have been imposed, okay, case one and case two. Now under case one, okay, we are trying to say that, okay, the base plate and the column end are machined perfectly. Is it all right? Okay, the base of the column and the top, okay, of the MS plate are machined perfectly so that you can expect that the load transfer takes place through bearing. Now, in second one, okay, they are not machined perfectly, not machined perfectly, right? It is machined, but it's not machined perfectly, correct? So, what, I, what how exactly we try to design the connection is what we are talking about. And coming to the base, or concrete bed, it is made of N20 concrete. Okay, I hope you have understood this particular data. So the, the, the column section is given, the load has been given, we are designing a slab base. Okay, case one, when the uh, bottom of the column and the top of the uh, slab base are machined perfectly and case two, when they are not machined perfectly. Okay, the grid of concrete is M20. Okay, so let's start the numerical problem. Okay, so let's start with respect to the material properties that we have here. We have got the steel and we have got the concrete. So that is the bed. So coming to steel, right? So we have Fe410 grade, that is ultimate 
tensile uh, ultimate strength is 410 and yield strength is 250 and these are the partial set vectors okay gamma m0 1.1 and gamma mw okay this data is for the second type or case 2 where it is not uh, uh, machined properly so this information we are trying to carry okay for case 2 requirement anyway these numbers is what we are trying to take in this numerical problem now coming to concrete coming to concrete so this is an important data that we are trying to talk about with respect to this we are trying to arrive at the uh, area required for the base plate now it is defined that it is m20 grade concrete okay so from class uh, 34.4 with respect to is 456 he defines the bearing strength of concrete so bearing strength of concrete is taken as 0 0.45 times fck where fck is the characteristic compressive strength of concrete given as 20 megapascals okay so that would be okay 9 megapascals so the bearing strength of concrete okay for the given grade that is m20 happens to be 9 megapascals right now the next important thing that we are trying to talk about is the section itself so ishb correct 710.2 okay is what has been defined so you can look at the steel tables you can look at the steel tables and try to get this information correct and you need to understand that i think you know that this number okay it's nothing but the depth that we are trying to have here so the depth of this given section is 350 as you can clearly have here okay and if you just try to look at the steel tables okay refer to this particular ishp you can get to know about the width of the plate correct which happens to be 250 millimeters correct and the thickness of the flange okay so the thickness of the flange right what is that okay which is 11.6 millimeters okay and the thickness of the web and the thickness of the web this one which happens to be 10.1 millimeters okay they're all required okay for this particular problem so you can just try to look at the steel tables and get these values okay now first one is to calculate the area of the base so what is the area required correct so very simple calculation that we are trying to talk about so the required area can be calculated as okay the load okay acting on the slab base okay acting on that slab base through the column correct so the column carries 1500 kiloton it gets transferred onto this slab base so the load carried by the slab base correct that is pu correct is 1500 okay and we are going to divide it by the bearing strength of concrete as we calculated the bearing strength is 9 megapascals so 1500 10 to the power of 3 that is newtons by 9 megapascals okay will give an area of okay some like 1 lakh 66,666.66 millimeters square if you convert that to meters you get it as 0 0.166 meters square correct so that is a kind of uh, uh, area okay that we are trying to talk about now assuming a square area okay assuming the square area for the base plate correct so you can just try to say that l equal to b okay you can just try to take the root of that which happens to be 0 0.408 meters please understand it is not necessary that you should assume a square uh, uh, a, a, i mean uh, square plate you can also definitely go for a rectangular plate definitely correct is it all right i can just try to tell you in my next slide okay how you can just try to adjust okay in this case we have taken a uh, square plate correct so if i take a square plate l equal to b so i can just try to take the root of that which happens to be 0 0.408 meters so i can just try to round it off to a higher number so i'm going to say let us try to take a square plate okay square plate of size 420 or 420 millimeter by 420 millimeters so this is how we have arrived at the uh, dimension that is the the area of the plate correct that is the area of the plate or the dimension of the plate correct now with respect to this dimension let us again check okay whether the uh, uh, bearing pressure okay acting on the concrete bed okay is it less than the bearing strength obviously it will be because you have taken uh, uh, more than uh, 0 0.408 obviously it will be you can clearly notice that okay so bearing strength okay is this correct so it, the, the bearing pressure should be less than that is what you need to understand correct so the bearing pressure w is calculated as what load by area 
So load, you know, 1500 into 10 power of 3 newtons area, 420 by 420. That is your dimension of the plate, okay, area. So this has given you the bearing pressure to be 8.5 megapascal, okay, which is less than the bearing strength of the concrete. So obviously it is quite safe. Okay, so we are trying to say it is all right. So we have arrived at the uh, dimension of the plate. Now the next important task, okay, is to find, okay, the thickness, the thickness of the plate. Okay, we have to find the thickness of the plate. For this, this information is required. So just I look at that. So the, the uh, dimension here is 420, correct? And that is 420, correct, isn't it? 420, okay? Now look at this, the I section, whatever we have given you, okay, has depth of 350 and width of 250 correct so with this information correct so 420 minus 350 divided by 2 will give you the value of these projections that is this distance this distance correct and the uh, uh, i mean a deduction of 250 from 420 divided by 2 okay will give you this distance am i clear so basically please understand Okay, we are trying to find out here what is the largest uh, projection from the I section and what is the smallest projection from the I section which happen to be A and B. In this case, the value of A as I told you is 420 minus 250 divided by 2. Okay, that comes to be 85 millimeters. So, we have got 85 here, 85 here. Okay, and coming to B, it is 420 minus 350 by 2 that is 35. Okay, 35 here and 35 here. So please understand these values of A and B are will be used now to calculate the thickness of the plate required here. Correct. Now to calculate the thickness of the plate, correct? Is it all right? So we are trying to refer okay class 7431 of IS 800 2007. So we just try to look at your uh, steel code. Correct. All right. IS 800 2007 class 7431 okay that will help you to calculate the thickness of the slab base correct TS so TS is calculated as root of 2.5 W into A square minus 0.3 B square gamma 0 okay 1 okay so that is gamma 0 by FY okay and that has to be less than TF TF is the thickness of the flange that we are trying to talk about I make clear so please understand right now we already computed W what is W here W is the actual uh, pressure, okay, that we have here at the base of the plate, which is 8.5 megapascals. So I think all these informations are here. So already computed, okay, W is 8.5. The value of A, we, we just checked that in the previous uh, slide, 85 millimeters, B is 35 millimeters. That is the projection of the steel plate beyond the I section, correct? The, the larger projection and the smaller projection. The partial set factor 1.10. Okay, yield strength 250 megapascals and we are trying to compare this with the thickness of flange which happens to be 11.6 millimeters. So whatever thickness that you get from this expression should be more than the thickness of the flange of the I section. So simplifying this, substituting this, okay, you have got a value, correct, of uh, 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 thickness which is 25.32 millimeters and definitely as you can clearly see it is more than 11.6 millimeters. If you get a value less than 11.6, you should at least provide, okay, thickness of 11.6 millimeters. So right now, I'm just trying to slightly round it off to a higher side. We are trying to say, so let us try to take this as 28 mm. So right now, we have completely arrived at the dimension of the slab base, which is nothing but 420 by 420 by 28 millimeters. Correct? Is it all right? So this is about it, about the dimension of the uh, slab base. Now comes to the uh, case one. So what is case one? The column end and the base plate are perfectly machined and hence the transfer, okay, of the load, okay, from the column to the top of the MS plate happens perfectly through bearing, correct? This is what you need to understand. This implies that the load is transferred to the base plate by direct bearing. Okay, and in this particular case, there is no bending moment also in this particular case. So therefore, okay, the, the connection at the base need not be designed. What do you mean by connection? So we are talking about, correct, the design of the cleat angles, cleat angles, correct, which we normally try to have, uh, which connect the web of the I section 
with the uh, MS plate and the flange of the eye section with the MS plate. Correct. So whenever we just try and talk about this one, okay, you don't need to do anything with respect to that. I make clear. So I hope you have understood. Okay, we don't need to do that. Okay, you can just try to provide things uh, nominally. Correct. So however, to keep the column in position. Correct. So please understand, you have to have some nominal kind of, uh, 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 I mean, angles. So I'm just trying to give two cleat angles of size 35, 35, 6. Why is this 35, 35, 6? So look at if you just try to recollect, okay, in the previous slide, correct. So what was the minimum dimension that we had here, okay. So the dimension that I have here B, correct, is only 35, that is 35. So I cannot have a cleat angle, correct, whose size is more than 35, correct. That's why I'm restricting my cleat angle here to size 35 mm, correct. However, the cleat angle I'm just trying to provide between the whip and the uh, uh, MS plate that is larger. Okay, there is no uh, I mean limitation with respect to that. So what I'm trying to do right now is okay. I'm just trying to think of having two cleat angles connecting the flange, correct, to the MS plate and size. Okay, is 35, 35 by 6, correct. And again, I'm just trying to have two cleat angles of size bigger one. Okay, this connects the column. Okay, with uh, this connects the column. Okay, with the web, this is not flange, it is a web. Okay, it connects the, it connects, correct, the column with the web, whereas this one connects the column with the flange. I hope you are trying to understand this. And you can have nominal boards, okay, over here, and this is how you can finish off, okay, with respect to the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, connection part. So, whenever we are just talking about perfectly machined for bearing, you don't need to worry about the connection. You are trying to provide these kind of connections in a very nominal way, correct? Is it all right? Yeah, this is what we are trying to say. And coming to the next one is with respect to the bolt, uh, uh, I mean, uh, holding down bolts is what we are trying to say, right? So since the base plate is uh, subject to only axial force, okay, please understand that there will be no bending moment in the plate, okay, is what we are trying to say. We are just trying to have it perfectly like that, okay? And hence, there is no tension in any part over there. And because of that, Please understand, okay, we just provide, okay, nominal 20 mm diameter uh, uh, bolts, four in number, one at each corner, whose length is 600 mm. So these things are generally provided, okay, nominally, so that, okay, you can just try to keep your uh, MS plate in position. Is it all right? So this is all about uh, the trying to uh, go ahead with uh, the first type of uh, uh, condition that we have specified, the column end and the top of the base plate are machined perfectly so that the load gets transferred by bearing, okay. So this is not quite uh, difficult, okay. So I hope uh, the same figure I have uh, uh, repeated here. So the only thing is, uh, uh, I, I think you can clearly notice that, uh, okay. So this is, uh, this entire thing comes here, okay. So the length of this is uh, 35, 35, 6. However, this is 65, 65, 8, correct. You can have sufficient uh, uh, length, okay. However, the length of the flange plate is limited to the width of the flange is what you can notice. So, you can just try to have a figure something like this with respect to the slab base. Now, uh, that is the first type, okay, perfectly uh, 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 machined kind of uh, uh, ends. Now, the next one is we don't have uh, a machine, uh, it's not that perfectly machined case, it's not that perfectly machined case. So, whenever we are just trying to talk about such kind of things, so please understand we have to think of connecting it. We have to think of connecting. That means at the base, you should think of a connection. Is it all right? Between the uh, connect, connecting the column and the, uh, uh, sl uh, and the slab base. Now, the best way of trying to do that is by welded connection in this particular case, okay. This is more simpler in this particular case, right. So, let's try to see how this is being done in this particular case, correct. So, generally, we try to go in for uh, welded connections, okay, whenever we have here. So, first thing that you have to understand is I've just given you the I section of with the dimensions. There is 250 flange, okay, 350 that is the entire depth and 11.6 thickness of flange, 10.1 millimeters that is the thickness of web, okay. I'm just trying to go in for welded connection. The first one I'm just trying to talk about is what is the total length of weld available, okay, right now. So what do you mean by available? I'm just trying to say, okay, so look at this. I'm just trying to have a weld here, a weld here, a weld here, 
Correct. Similarly, I'm going to repeat that a weld here, a weld here, a weld here, and I'm just trying to have even a weld, okay, in this direction, okay, right? Is it all right? So, can okay, just try to see this. How I'm just trying to go ahead with respect to welding the column at the base with the uh, MS plate present below that. So, I'm just trying to just check what is the total length available, okay? What is the total length available? Correct. So, I'm just trying to say 2 into 250. So, that means you got 250 at the top, you got 250 at the bottom. So, 2 into 250, okay? I hope you have understood this. Correct. The next one, look at this. So, when you just try to come to this line, okay, I have to deduct the thickness of web. So, that means from 250, I deduct 10.1. I get, get the length of this and again, I'm going to repeat that here. Correct. So, the second one, 250 minus 10.1 is with respect to the weld on the inner side of the flange and the inner side of the flange, correct? And two times, two times, one here, one here. Now coming to this red one, correct? You can clearly see that you have to deduct 11.6 thickness, 11.6 thickness from 350. That will give the length of this into two times. So you can clearly see here from 350, you have to deduct two thicknesses of the flange, one here, one here and you are going to multiply it by two times, okay, that will give you, okay, the total length available in this particular case, correct? Now, having obtained the length, okay, now there are two things that we are trying to talk about. One is the size of the weld, weld size is what we are going to just decide and apart from that, please understand that at the corners, especially here, correct? I make clear, when you just try to take the weld, you cannot take it around Okay, generally we try to take it around by two times the weld size. That cannot happen in this particular case. So, we are just trying to have a small discussion with respect to that. The first one, okay, as we said, okay, it is nothing but 8 mm size and generally we try to have what are called as end returns, correct? Now, please understand we cannot consider end return welds, okay, because, okay, at the end of the eye section, you have got the toe and the fillets. Okay, so generally you cannot just try to account the end returns, okay, of the fillet weld, okay, because of the presence of, okay, the fillets, okay, and the toes present over there. We are going to just have a discussion on that. So, hence what we are trying to say is you have to deduct the end returns, okay, from the available total length to get the effective weld length. In the previous slide, I have calculated the total length available, but that entire length cannot be welded because we cannot have end returns. We cannot account end returns, correct, at the ends of the uh, near the toes and the fillets. So let's try to see how we calculate the effective weld length. So just try to look at this. Now we are trying to calculate how many end returns do we have here, correct? So please understand. Okay, if we just try to look at this filled fillet weld, correct? So I have one, okay, here and one here. That is two in numbers is what we say. Now the next one, okay, so we are going to have here. So I'm going to say, so I have got one end return here, one end return here, correct? And also I have got one end return here and one return here, correct? Did you understand? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to have six more here, correct? Identical to this, I'll have six more end returns here. But coming to this particular direction, coming to this particular direction, please understand if I just try to talk about this, okay, I will not be accounting one more end return here because already I have accounted here. Is it all right? I will not be accounting, okay, the end return for these welds, correct, because I already accounted this at this place, correct, you cannot duplicate it. So what we say is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here and 6 here, so totally what we say is we have 12 end, end returns and at each end return, okay, the size of weld is two times S which have to deduct from the total uh, available length, okay, so that that will give the effective length. So having finalized the number of uh, end returns, so what we say is that's 12, okay, and this is what you had calculated, okay, available 1633.4, you're trying to deduct 12 times, this is 2 into S, 2 into S, is it all right? Did you understand? So, for at each end return, okay, I'm going to deduct 2S. S is the weld size. So, 2 into 8 into 12 and that will give you, okay, the effective weld length that we can assume. Correct? So, what we are trying to say is we are going to have 
this amount of weld length. And we already have assumed the size of weld as 8 mm. So the throat thickness in this case would be 0.7 times 8, that is 5.6 millimeters. So what you need to understand, this amount of length available, correct, and that's the throat thickness. If you multiply this, okay, you can easily understand, we get the area, okay, that of the weld, okay, resisting that shear. Now, we would like to now calculate what is the design strength of the weld, okay. This design strength of the weld, TWD, is it all right, is calculated by what, okay. That means LWT into FU by root 3 into gamma M1. Am I clear? Did you understand? So, this is nothing but the area multiplied by stress divided by your PSF and this number. Correct. Now, in this particular case, we are trying to calculate, okay, TWD per millimeter length, okay. You could also, you could have also have taken this, okay, as, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the value that is total value and you could have checked. In this particular case, I am just trying to take LW as 1 mm, okay. This is known, okay. The ultimate strength is given, 410 megapascals, gamma M1 is given. So, with respect to this data, we have got the, weld, uh, the, the design strength of the weld as 1060.48 Newton per mm. So that means for every 1 mm length, okay, it can resist a force of 1060.48 Newtons. Now what you need to understand is, okay, we have some uh, available length, okay, let's try to check, okay, using this particular data, correct. So that means right now the force that we are trying to have is 1500 into the power of 3, correct, isn't it? So if you just talk about that weld, weld strength, okay, so weld strength is what? Okay, so that is 1060.48 Newtons per mm. Am I clear? 1 mm length is going to resist this force. So if that is the case, that is the case, then what amount of weld length is required? What amount of weld length is required? It is 1414.58 millimeter weld length is required. But if we just try to check here, okay, the required weld length in this particular case, which is this, okay, it's less than available, okay, that is 1441.4 millimeters. So that means what, okay, so that, that amount of length, okay, with an 8 mm size weld is sufficient, okay, to resist, okay, this particular force. Am I clear? Is what you need to understand. In case if this not, does not resist, probably you can think of going in for a bigger size weld. Am I clear? Did you understand? So wait, we can go for 10 mm, okay, and then try to check okay, whether this uh, works out. So, we can clearly see that you provide 8 mm filled all round ISHB 350. What do you mean by all round? You can clearly see here. So, this is uh, the I section that we have talked about, this thick line. So, whatever we have shown you here is nothing but the 8 mm fillet weld, okay, that has been provided. Generally, we try to do this, correct, when we don't have, okay, when we don't have okay, machined surfaces, okay, at the bottom and the top, correct, is what you are trying to talk about, okay, and finally, right, we are trying to talk about uh, the uh, uh, anchor bolts, in this particular case, please understand, so there is no bending moment, so we don't worry about, uh, uh, I mean, uh, checking with respect to tension, however, we are trying to provide, okay, nominal 20 mm diameter hold down bolts of length 600 mm, okay, at each corner, okay, to keep the base plate in position. Is it all right? So, uh, this is what you are just trying to look at and these are the uh, bolt holes, okay, and this is in plan, obviously, this is in plan, correct, okay. So, you can just try to have a, a, a thing like that. In addition to that, if you think of, if you think of having cleat angles also, yeah, that can be accommodated. Is it all right? Uh, that, that would be a nominal kind of a, uh, uh, I mean, uh, additional uh, connection that you can think of. We can just try to do that. You can also, uh, with respect to, uh, I mean, beyond this, you can also provide the, the uh, cleat angles, correct? I hope you had uh, a good uh, understanding, okay, with respect to this concept of uh, column bases, uh, different types of column bases. That is nothing but uh, uh, the slab base and the gusseted base and uh, uh, the, the, uh, the differences between the two. And then we have worked a typical example with respect to slab base. I hope this presentation was uh, quite uh, uh, useful to you, right? So, uh, we will uh, stop the presentation uh, uh, right now and then we will try to take up the next uh, kind of uh, uh, connection that is the gazetted uh, 
uh, uh, slab, a base slab, right, in the next uh, uh, session. Thank you.